Hi guys, School here and welcome to another episode of The Trekking School. In this episode, we're going to focus on how to park a trailer. Now that's not the same as the previous episode, which was how to reverse a truck. Reversing, in the previous episode, I taught you how to reverse a truck. I taught you the principles of reversing a truck with a trailer attached. I tried to teach you the skills and the thought process that you go through to maneuver the trailer where you want it to be. In this episode, we're focusing on how to park a trailer, and that means parking a trailer in the real world, in real world scenarios. The big difference is that in the real world, you don't always have the space that you need. People leave cars in places that you don't want them, the trailer parking position might be in an awkward spot, all kinds of things will be thrown at you. The secret to parking a trailer in the real world requires two things, planning and execution. Now the planning begins the moment that you turn up at the parking space. That's when planning begins. An execution requires you to put into practice what I taught you in the previous episode so that you can get the trailer positioned where you want it to be. But first comes the planning. The planning is the thought process that you need which tells you what am I going to do? How am I going to get my trailer in a position where I can reverse it into the spot that they need? That's the planning stage. The best way I can think of to teach you that is to show you a few examples. I'm going to show you what I consider to be the thought processes I go through, the problems that you might encounter, how you work your way around them, and just to get you to think about what's going on. So here we are outside of Walbert. This is our first example parking space. This parking space at Walbert, you can see the trailer point there. It's around the back of that wall. If I press F3 and then F5, we can cycle through the different displays of the sat now. That display there, the kind of zoomed in one, is quite a useful one. When you arrive at the parking space, it isn't always obvious where they want it to go. You can see that it is down the side of that wall. However, a common mistake at this point is to immediately turn left and then drive into that parking space. But they don't want the trailer in forward, they want the trailer in backwards. And the reason is quite simple. If you, if you actually have a look at the parking area, you can see what it is. They want it reversed in because they have a delivery door right there. So they want the back of their trailer to be right on that delivery door. So you have this problem. You need to get that trailer reversed into this position from the entrance over there. Well, one option is you could turn in, drive, and use all this available space here to do a U-turn. And that is possibly an option in the current cab that we're in. But in something like a Kenworth W900 or any kind of sleeper cab with its very long wheelbase, you will really struggle to do a full U-turn in here without jackknifing. Let's say, for example, that parking area over there had some vehicles in it that prevented you from doing the U-turn. Or a skip. I've often seen that kind of situation. You never know what you're going to get when you arrive at the delivery point. So what would you do then? Well, you only really have a couple of options. In order to reverse the trailer down there, you're either going to have to reverse it off the main road, which is always a last resort to be fair, or we can utilise the space that we have over here on the right. So why don't we do that? Why don't we just jump in the truck and uh, think to ourselves, without any sort of thought process we're going to go through, let's think to ourselves, let's, let's just drive over here and see what happens, alright? So we'll turn in, and we'll start reversing. Okay, let's go external camera. Okay, oh, that looks a bit tricky. Uh, let's go full lock here. And we'll start turning. The truck's starting to turn the trailer around, but oh my god. It's, it's gone into a bit of a mess, hasn't it? Look. I'm now hitting the curb. The trailer is nowhere near going down that spot there. So what went wrong? What should we have done? Right, well, remember in the last episode, I taught you how to reverse the trailer, right? Remember, I said to you, from this angle, look at, the, look at the wheels on the back of the trailer. That is your pivot point. That's where you put those wheels is the pivot point for you to maneuver um, the trailer. So where do we need those wheels to be in order to reverse down there? Well, if you look at this, look at the guy who's cleaning the window here. Right in front of him is, is the curb space, right? And a piece of it has been cut out. Just roughly where the top of the exhaust is. You can see it there, right? That is where we need the trailer wheels to be. If we can get the trailer wheels there, we have a nice natural pivot point to come around this space, reverse the trailer down there, and reverse it into that spot there. So let's try that again. Only this time, I'm going to drive forward, and I'm thinking about 
I'm thinking about where the back wheels are. Not where my truck is, but where my trailer wheels are. I want them to be somewhere here where the curb is, just down the side of us there. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to look in the mirror. I can see the trailer wheels now, I've just passed that point. But I've got loads of space here, so why not use it, okay? Why not drive down here and give myself plenty of space? Let's stop and take a look at what we did. So we've come down here. Now, remembering what I said to you about reversing, the trailer wheels are now roughly pointed at the pivot point that we're going for. And that's good, so let's stick it into reverse. We start to turn, and you can see the back wheels are starting to come in. The trailer is turning, it's making an arc. I'm gonna straighten off a little bit. Keep that arc going. I'm going to show you another problem now, which is another thing you need to think about. So if I start reversing around here, okay, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, this is good. I'm doing really well, right? I've, I've managed to beat the first bend, but we're going to hit a problem in a second. And it's something that perhaps you don't think of the first time you do this. Remember, I want to get down the side of that wall, so now I'm going to have to go full lock. Can you see what's about to happen here? I'm going to miss my point, or I'm going to hit this wall if I'm not careful. I'm on the grass already, and then I'm going to have to start turning in. Now these guys in the shop are not going to love you if you, if you put your truck tyres all over the grass. This is actually working, but it's not ideal. So what else could we have done to make that just a little bit better? What could we have done in the planning stage? Alright, let's do that again. But this time, I'm going to do something slightly different. Instead of allowing my trailer to go all the way towards that outside wall, I'm going to keep it more on an inside tight line. The first bend we did exactly right. However, we could have done something else. If we'd have kept the turn going like this, so we make the turn a bit sharper. Now look at the trailer wheels. They're now starting to make a much tighter arc around that curb. Now this time, we are using we are allowing ourselves plenty of space either side of the truck lock. So now I've got quite a few options. I can go this way, or I can go the other way. Once I start making my turn, my second turn, look at the trailer wheels. The second turn needs to pivot around this, that corner of the wall. But I've got loads of space here on the left. My truck's not going to go on the grass. I'm not going to upset anybody, and my trailer wheels are aiming right for that corner pincer point now. That's the important point. You see it? You can make this as, as narrow or wide as you want. The point is, you've got all the space in the world over here to do it. Because if you thought about it, you're making two turns. You're making the first corner and then the second corner. And they're both very important. They're both very important for, for your planning stage of where you want the trailer wheels to be. Now it's simply a case of pulling forward and making the final reverse. In this particular example, I looked at the obstacles that were involved. I had the lamppost in the way, we had the grass that we didn't want to go on. We had the cars to consider, but more importantly what we did was we looked at the two corner points and got the trailer wheels to cut around both corner points to make the final turn. So here we are, I've just arrived at Bitumen in our second example delivery point. And we'll pull up here and then we'll take a look and we'll see what we can plan. So F3, F5, and you can see the delivery point is over there. Right, so how are we going to manage this? Let me show you what a lot of people would do. They start off something like this, they'd come over Without any kind of planning planning or strategy, they'd think to themselves, okay, so uh, I need to be in here, so I can probably just squeeze my truck in that bit there. Because this is how you park a car, right? You know, you just sort of... <laughs> and then you kind of go, um, okay, well, how am I supposed to get my trailer in backwards there? How's this going to work? Here's what you do, okay? So having looked around here, you can see that my trailer is facing completely the wrong way. Like, the back wheels are not even pointing towards the delivery point, which is pretty much an essential requirement if you want to park your trailer. 
However, they are po pointing towards a gap over there. Essentially, I need to turn my entire trailer around. I need to do a 4180. This yard is too small to do a 4180 in. There's too many things going on. But that gap looks pretty useful. So if we stick it into reverse, look for the trailer wheels. There they are. You can see them starting to bank in there. And we can come out of here. Okay, so we could have reversed the trailer off the main road and come in this way. Or we could have turned around inside the yard like that. Either way is fine. The important thing is now, we're now set up remotely correctly to head back towards the trailer parking point. This is where phase two comes in, the planning stage. We've got a 90 degree bend right here. Our pivot point is on the corner of this building, so as long as our trailer starts to make its turn there, we're fine. This is an S-shaped reverse. We're going to have to reverse our trailer, and then it's going to have to make an S-shape in order to get into that trailer point. This is quite a tricky reverse. But it starts with this view here, okay? Let me do it from the outside and you can see it a bit easier. We need to get this trailer turning quickly. So we make it around the first bend, we keep pushing it on a sharp bit turn, we don't want to straighten up just yet. If we straighten up, the trailer will start to go towards those diggers over there and we don't want that. So we keep the trailer turning. But, at this point, you need to think about something else. We're on an S-Bend, which means when we start to reverse our trailer into the parking bay, the truck here is going to have to go towards that building on the right. So we need to leave a gap. We don't want to be close to that building, otherwise we can't make our final turn. So let's start straightening up. The trailer's starting to move towards where we want it. So we'll get our truck to run parallel with this building here. So it's still making its turn, but we're not going to hit the building. Okay, you can see it making its arc. It's on a nice course, just keep your eye on those trailer back wheels, right? So now we start to push the trailer over. Into the angle we want it. There you go. And that is now delivered. Of course, you can make it as tidy or as messy as you want. As long as you get that green bar, you can release it. But the principles that we learned there are, first of all, we came in and we can't do a U-turn inside this yard, okay? And we are facing the wrong way. So we then are faced with having to turn our trailer around. Then, you're on the final planning stage. And the final planning stage was to pivot around that bend and then make an S-bend reverse into this parking bay. It's a challenge, but this is how you do it. Now, what we have in this example is one of the more trickier delivery points, particularly if you have a long wheelbase truck. This is a nasty one. I've come across this one a few times, but let me just show you what's going on here. So, F3 and then F5, you can see that the delivery point is just over there, but you can't even see it. So you're faced with this problem that you don't know how you're even supposed to get there, because on the sat-nav display, it's not actually shown the obstacles, so if you go to external camera, you can probably get a view. You can see it, it's behind all the pipes and the boxes. Why is this nasty? The reason it's nasty is because, let me show you. Let me show you what a lot of people do, okay? So you look at that and you think, okay, I've got to reverse my trailer into there. I can't re reverse it in this side. I can see that I need to get my trailer and reverse it in that way. Let's not even think about at this stage, that final turn is very, very sharp. Let's just think about getting the trailer in the right position. So a lot of people would do this. They, they'd head off, they'd come down here, they'd be like, okay, I got this. And they line themselves up and they think, okay, I need to go that way with the trailer, so I just need to sort of turn around here. I can reverse all the way over into that corner, maybe. Like that. Is that going to work? Nah, maybe. Maybe it's going to work. Let's, let's go forward and use all the room that we can. As soon as we start to reverse, we're going to go full lock. And you see the problem. This isn't even a long wheelbase cab. And we are struggling 
to even make that first turn. So then what we have to do is we have to start messing about. We have to go forward. Like that. And then try again. Just to get in reverse. Can we make it turn this way? Yes, we can. We can just about possibly make the first bend. Camera's struggling. There we go. So we can just about get the first bend done. But boy, are we badly positioned right now. Look at this. How the heck are we even going to make the second turn? Well, let's go back to the start and see if we can think our way around it a bit more. So here we are. Let's try again. Let's think to ourselves, okay, if we wish to reverse our trailer in at this point, that becomes a, a full 180 turn. It's like a U-bend. We can go around the first bend, pivot around that, and then pivot around the second one. Or we can go around the first bend, straighten up down the right side, and then pivot the second one. Either way, it's kind of looking like what we should be doing right now is turning our trailer around. There's quite a bit of space here. Again, we could come off the main road. That may or may not work. It kind of depends on traffic. Sometimes you can get away with it. Sometimes you've just got a big queue behind you and you can't manage it. But there are other ways. There's actually some space around here that you can do things. For example, and there are more than one way to do this. For example, we can go forward and we can see there's a whole lot of space over there. Let's use that to our advantage. So we'll come forward like that. And then we'll start to reverse in. So we use this gap over here. And then we pull forward back towards the main road. At this point you'd be checking for traffic just to make sure that because you're pulling out on the main road. If you put your beacons on by the way, or your hazard lights depending on how, what you want to call them, then the traffic kind of backs off a little bit. Not fantastically well but it does back off a little bit. And then we start our reverse, so we'll look at the trailer wheels. First pivot point is around that other trailer, the taco trailer there. So we'll reverse down the middle. Now we've got a bit of a shout on this, okay? Our trailer is now heading towards the destination. We're still not done yet though, there's still a lot more work to be done here. Let's consider that part one done. What do we do about part two? What's the second phase of this whole thing? Well, the second phase is quite simply this. That corner that we can see, we need to get our trailer wheel just about to pivot around that corner. So let's start pushing the trailer and head the trailer wheels towards that corner. Like that. Straighten it off. Okay, you can see I've cut that nice and fine. And we'll start turning again. So we get the trailer to turn. It's pivoting around that corner now. Now, could we carry on and do the whole thing? It's very unlikely in this situation because of these concrete barriers on the right here. If you notice, our truck has the ability to keep pushing. We can keep pushing the trailer all the way around this U-bend. But this concrete block here is kind of not looking great right now. Although it looks like, because I took such an inside tight line there, I might actually get away with this. Indeed, I have got away with it. <laughs> so, if you didn't, if you'd, if you'd not quite cut that bend there, your truck would now be facing this concrete barrier. The trick then is to just pull forward over there, and begin the second turn, pivoting around this bend. So you just do it in an extra stage. It just so happens that I managed to turn in tightly enough, that I managed to do that in one complete unit. Which is obviously the golden thing to aim for. I'm off track, it's fine. But what we'll do is we'll just reverse all the way back. We've got plenty of room here. Reverse all the way back. And then we'll pull forward. And try and get our trailer wheels positioned in the, in the correct place. Normally I would do this first person, but I'm doing it third person for you. Uh, because it's easier to, to see what is actually going on. And plus, as I said to you in the how to reverse a truck video, 
Um, when you're just starting out doing these kind of reverse, it is actually easier in the external camera to be looking at the trailer as if, as I, I explained in the video, as if you've just picked the front of the trailer up and, and kind of pushed it like a barrel. If you think of it that way, it's much easier to understand what's going on. Because when you spin this way, a lot of people get confused between left and right. And that's something that just comes later. Um, so I got external camera just to make it easier to see what's going on. But in the final example, I'm going to show you entirely in a first person view what I would do. Just to see, you know, what you're aiming for. Alright, this is our final example. And this, we've got a trailer full of mercuric chloride. Let me just show you what the trailer looks like. Look at that. It's a lovely trailer. Really nice haul this. This is actually a common delivery point. This refinery here. Um, if once you start doing um, any of the hazardous substances loads, you'll very often find yourself down at this particular point here. But like I say, I'm actually going to show you how to do this from a first person point of view. If we bring up the sat nav and have a look at the delivery point, we can see it's over on the right there. Now, we can't actually see the orientation at the moment, we just know that it's on the right. So let's just start by driving in and see what we see. Okay, we can see the delivery point there. You can see that the white bit is at the front, so the trailer needs to be reversed in. So what do we want to do? Well, we could go over there and then reverse the trailer in that way, which is fine. Or if you actually look, we've kind of got a natural space here to just do a full, a full 180. So what I would actually do in this situation is I would pull forward. Uh, you can, of course, you know, if you get to about here, you can, of course, um, head into that corner over there. Uh, that's one possible option. So we, we, you know, we put the truck over there towards that porter cabin, and then reverse it straight in. It is a very difficult parking space, this one, if you look, because it's actually between that white building and another trailer. So it, we've got to be pretty accurate. Now the thing is about being pretty accurate is it's always best, as I explained to you before, if you're doing first person, it's always best if you can to be doing a near side reverse like this, even though these exhausts are slightly in the way, you can still see what's going on as you're making the turn. If you do it, if we went over to that side there and started to reverse, we would be doing a blind reverse, okay? We'd only have that mirror to look at. We can't stick our head out of that window. So in this case, I'm going to do a full 180 here because we've got space, and then I'm going to do a near side reverse. So here's what I would do. I would drive forward. I would start to make a turn. We're absolutely no danger of jackknifing this at all. I'm going to bring the truck all the way over here, make sure I leave a nice gap on that side there. And I'm going to start my arc, my turning arc. So we just need to set it off, and then you can straighten the wheel. Remember the truck's going straight, but the trailer isn't, so the trailer keeps making that arc. Just keep your eye on this side here. As long as you've left a gap on this right hand side, you should be good. But if you put the truck too far over, you won't be able to keep control of this arc. Because you won't be able to straighten up like this. See, I'm straightening up here, which is uh, stopping the turning arc. But I need space to be able to do it. So now we have to look in the mirror because the exhaust is in the way. We just keep heading towards that trailer. And then we start to make our a gentle turn in. Looking at the very, very, very back wheel. That's what you need to be focused on. Look at the... Pretend there's a straight line between those two trailer wheels. That's what you need to do. And you need to look at that straight line. Like, where is it heading? It's now parallel with that parking space, you see? And that's how you do it in one go. If we have a quick look from the outside... So you can see there, we actually had quite a lot of space over towards that white building. Uh, it is quite a narrow trailer this one, a full width box trailer is actually a lot lot bigger and is more danger of hitting that building. But the exhausts on the Kenny make it pretty tricky when you're looking out of the uh, out of the window like this. If you don't have these exhausts fitted, you'll always have good visibility on the trailer wheels. But that's just the way it is, you know, if you want to, you know, accessorise your truck, you might make things more difficult for yourself when you're first person reversing. Alternatively, just go third person, you know, do whatever it takes. The fact that you're reversing your truck and your trailer and parking it manually is, is still a bonus. It's still great to be doing that rather than just skipping parking or going for the simple parking. Try to get better at this. The more you do it, the, the easier it will get. Don't get disheartened. Think about the principles I taught you. 
you know, plan what you're doing and then execute what you're doing. Get the execution done first. Learn how to control your truck and your trailer and then try to go for the parking. And hopefully you'll get the, that bonus XP and get more out of your trucking. That's it for this episode of Trucking School. I hope you found that useful. Please give me a like if you did. Until the next one, take care, guys. Happy trucking.